I'm Miss Carrie, and I'm really glad to see you for another story time for the library. And this, I don't know if you remember, if you've seen her before, this is Miss Evie. Evie is my puppy dog, and sometimes she likes to help out with story time. So we'll see if she wants to help out with us today or not. She wanders around. <laughs> She's kind of her own dog. Do you have dogs or cats where you live? I bet they're cute too. I wonder if they like to sit and watch story time with you while I sit and make story time with my dog. I've got some pretty good stories today. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a whole lot of snow outside. And I got to thinking about snow and I got to thinking about maybe some animals that like snow and maybe some of these animals you don't know about. Maybe you've never heard of these animals, but I am eager to share them with you. I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Shall we? Get ready to clap your hands. <laughs> clap your hands if you love stories. Clap your hands, I know you do. I'm so glad that we could be together. Glad to share a story time with you. All right, our first story we're gonna hear about today <laughs> is about an ox. Do you know what an ox is? like a bull, like a big man cow, a male cow. This particular ox is a very famous ox. Its name is Babe. A while back, I told you a story about a man named Paul Bunyan. And I don't know if you remember that story, but Paul Bunyan was a lumberjack. This is something we call a tall tale. Remember, I've explained tall tales before, but just in case you don't remember, these are stories that people tell that they exaggerate. They make up parts and they make them really, really wild and unbelievable. They get crazier and crazier with every person who tells them. And when they tell stories about Paul Bunyan, they talk about a lumberjack who was enormous. He was a giant lumberjack. A lumberjack is someone who cuts down trees. Well, Paul was as tall as the trees and he could chop down dozens of trees with just one single swipe of his ax. Oh, my other dog is coming to join us now too. <laughs> this is Gideon. And guys, if I was telling a tall tale, I would tell you that I have 12 dogs in the house, but I only have the two. <laughs> anyway, in this particular story, Paul Bunyan, the lumberjack, has been out in the woods chopping down trees all day. Gideon. <laughs> He's been chopping down trees all day and it's starting to get late and the snow is really deep where he is, just like it's probably deep at your house. But when the snow comes up to Paul Bunyan's knees, his knees are pretty tall. That snow might have been as tall as your house. And Paul was wading through the snow and it was so cold. And you know how sometimes when snow gets really cold, it looks almost blue instead of white? Well, he was wading through that blue snow, just pushing through, shivering, shivering. And he heard a noise. That's right. He heard a noise that sounded kind of like a cross between a, a sheep bleeding and a grunt couldn't see where that came from. So he went looking and he looked behind the trees and he looked around caves. And finally, <laughs> finally, he found a teeny tiny baby ox. It was buried in the snow. It was so little and it was shivering cold. It was the coldest little ox. It was so cold that its skin had turned blue. <gasps> And so he picked up that ox. He couldn't just leave it sitting out in the snow. And he took it back to his cabin and he put it by the fire and he put blankets all over it and warmed it up. And the ox warmed up and got better, but its skin stayed blue. It never did turn back to a normal brown, but that was okay. And Paul and the ox became really good friends and he named that ox Babe. Now, the thing about Paul, something about that magic that made him the tallest lumberjack must have rubbed off on Babe because Babe got bigger and bigger and 
Babe the Big Blue Ox <laughs> turned out to be just the right size for Paul Bunyan, the giant lumberjack. And they worked together. And when they worked together as a lumberjack team, they could bring in more wood than any two people ever could working together. They would make giant piles of a hundred trees and they would tie them to Babe's back and Babe would pull them along in the snow, carving great big ditches for great big lines and trails in that snow. It was amazing. And after a while, they had gotten so, to be such good friends that they didn't think they could be missing much of anything else. But one day when they were out and they were wandering around, they happened to find another little cow. <laughs> and this cow, instead of being blue, was yellow. So yellow they almost didn't see her hiding in the hay. Well, they pulled her out and they decided to name her Sunny because she was just about the right color to be called that. And she grew and grew and grew too. She didn't quite get as big as Babe did, but she was still plenty big enough. She was a cow so they could milk her and she made enough milk to make dairy, make butter and cheese and all the dairy products for all of the other lumberjack men who lived in their camp. Sometimes she made enough butter that they could grease the giant, giant pancake griddle that Paul had made out of a big frozen lake. And they could make one pancake that could feed the entire camp. The only problem, the only argument they ever had between Babe the Big Blue Ox and Sunny the Cow when it, is when it came to the weather. See, even though Babe warmed up and he wasn't frozen anymore, he still liked the cold and the snow best. But Sunny the cow liked it when it was warm. And so in the winter time, she would shiver and be just so unhappy and she wouldn't make much milk at all. So one day, Paul went to the friend he had who made glass, different colors of glass, and he had his friend make Sunny a pair of glasses out of green glass so that when she looked out at the white snow, it looked green and she thought it was summer. <laughs> and that was good enough for her. And she started making so much butter that they were able to grease the tracks and they could just pull the wood along even more easily than they did before. Isn't that amazing? Do you believe any of this? I bet you could make up some stories too. Can you come up with any stories to tell about a giant blue ox? Okay, let me ask you, when you go out and you play in the snow, are you wearing a hat, a scarf, and maybe some mittens? Let's do a finger play about mittens. What do we think? Can you show me like you're wearing a mitten? And here we go. Here is a mitten, a snug fuzzy one with a place for my fingers and a place for my thumb. Here are two mittens, a colorful sight, one for my left hand and one for my right. Here are our mittens, as soft as can be, a warm pair for you and a warm pair for me. Let's do that one more time, shall we? Here is a mitten, a snug fuzzy one, a place for my fingers and a place for my thumb. Here are two mittens, a colorful sight. One for my left hand and one for my right. Here are our mittens, as soft as can be. A warm pair for you and a warm pair for me. Now I'm gonna tell you the story of the rainbow crow. Now, before we begin, can you think of what a crow looks like? What color is a crow? Do you know? That's right. Crows are black. And what does a crow sound like? Can you make the sound of a crow for me? <laughs> Pretty good. They go, ka, ka, ka. 
you think crows are pretty? Some people do. My husband, Mr. Carey, <laughs> he likes crows an awful lot. But maybe not many people would think that they're the most beautiful bird. But once upon a time, they were. This story I'm going to tell you is actually a Native American story. It comes from a tribe called the Lenai Lenape tribe. I'm sure that I'm not saying that quite correctly. But this is the story of how Rainbow Crow helped to save all the other animals. That's right, Rainbow Crow. But let's start back a little bit. You see, one day the animals woke up and everything looked very, very different from how it had looked when they went to sleep the night before. The ground was covered with snow and ice and it was so cold. And at first it seemed like a pretty fun thing. They dove into the snow and they dug in it. They made things out of it. They hid in it and popped up to scare each other. But the snow kept falling and it got colder and colder. The little animals started to get covered up and the big ones had to dig them out. And the big ones had trouble walking as the snow got higher and higher up their legs. And soon they were afraid that if it kept snowing like that, soon all of the animals would freeze and there would be no more animals left. Finally, they decided we have to send a messenger up to the creator. And we have to tell him that things have to change and we can't keep going like this. We have to tell him that he needs to make the world warm again for us. And they decided that was a pretty good plan, but then they got to arguing about who was gonna go. They thought about sending Mr. Owl, who was very, very smart, but the owl could only really see well at night. And since it was gonna be a pretty long journey, they didn't wanna send someone who couldn't see during the day. They decided that Coyote couldn't go because Coyote got distracted pretty easily and they needed someone to stay focused. They knew that the turtle could stay focused, but the turtle would take far too long to get there. And they decided finally that the person they knew that they could send that would stay focused and would get there quickly was Rainbow Crow. Not only was Rainbow Crow perfect in those regards, but Rainbow Crow was so beautiful. They thought the creator would really listen to him. And Rainbow Crow had the most beautiful singing voice. He could sing the most wonderful songs that anyone would stop and listen to. Well, it was a really long trip. It was three whole days straight up, straight up past the clouds and then past the sun and the moon and the stars themselves. And Crow had to work really, really hard to fly there. And finally, when he got all the way up to where the creator lived, he called out, but no one answered. And he called out again, but no one answered because you see, creator was wrapped up in his thoughts, thinking of all the new things that he could put down on earth for the animals to have fun with or not. And finally, Rainbow Crow started to sing and sang his very, very best song. And that got the creator's attention. The creator came to sit and listen to this beautiful bird sing this wonderful song. And when the crow finished, the creator said, what can I give you? How can I thank you for that song? And the crow said, the animals and I would like you to unthink the snow. It's very beautiful, but we need it to be warm or we will all freeze. The creator wished that he could give that gift, but he said, I'm sorry. The snow and the ice have their own spirits. I can't just undo them. And the crow said, well, what are we going to do? The creator said, you're not going to freeze. I have something that you can have took a stick and he stuck it into the blazing sun and he brought it to the crow and he said this is fire this will keep you warm but you need to be very careful and very quick taking it back to the earth before the whole stick burns up rainbow crow thanked the creator very very much and took the stick in its beak and began to fly back down to the earth and the fire was burning hotter and hotter as the crow tried to fly as fast as it could. When he was passing the stars, the flames started to creep toward its tail and he felt the heat against his feathers there. 
when he was passing the sun and the moon, that heat grew hotter all the way up on his body. He felt his feathers starting to singe around the edges and he flew as fast as he could. As he began to come back down through the clouds, the smoke was starting to get into his throat and he was coughing around the stick. And finally, when he landed on the earth and gave that fire to the animals and they took it away to light a big bonfire, he looked at himself and was heartbroken. His beautiful rainbow feathers had all singed to black without a single other color to be seen. And his song was gone too because the smoke had damaged his voice so much that now all he could make, all he could say was, gah, gah, gah. And while the other animals were rejoicing and warming themselves up at the giant bonfire and having the celebration, Rainbow Quill couldn't celebrate. He sat by himself feeling sad until he felt a soft wind on his nose and he looked up and saw the creator was there. And the creator said, don't be sad, Crow. You see, the other animals don't know this yet, but you will be thankful for the way you look. Sometime when people come, they won't hunt you because your feathers will make them think that you don't taste so good. <laughs> and they won't try to catch you to put you in cages to make you sing for them because they don't know how beautiful your voice used to be. And here, and he reached out and he touched the crow's feathers. And immediately they went from sort of a dull, dry looking black to a very, very shiny, lustrous black that if you looked into them closely, shimmered and shone and you could see the colors of the rainbow deep in the black. He said that will remind all of the animals of what you did for them. And they're gonna be thankful to you forever. Let's do the Snokey Pokey. <laughs> I think that we've done this one before. Do you remember how it goes? As long as you can remember what you put on to go play in the snow, you should be able to figure this out. <laughs> okay. We're gonna start with our left mitten. Okay, so make your mitten for me. And <laughs> you put your left mitten in. Push it in forward to the front. You put your left mitten out. Pull it back. You put your left mitten in and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey. That's when you kind of spin around and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. I think we can do the rest of it without the instructions. You ready? You put your right mitten in, you put your right mitten out, you put your right mitten in, and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey and you turn yourself about, that's what it's all about. You put your hat in, you put your hat out, you put your hat in, and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey and you turn yourself about, that's what it's all about. You put your right boot in, you put your right boot out, you put your right boot in and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. You put your left boot in, you put your left boot out, you put your left boot in and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. Should we put our whole snowsuit in? You put your whole snowsuit in. You put your whole snowsuit out. You put your whole snowsuit in and you shake it all about. You do the snokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. Now we just dance. You do the snokey pokey. You do the snokey pokey. You do the snokey pokey. That's what it's all about. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's dog crazy time again. I am so glad that you came to listen to story time today. I really, really am. Gideon is too. And I hope that you have some fun going out and playing in the snow. Maybe making some snow angels or a snowman. I know that I'm having fun playing in the snow. And I know that these guys are too. <laughs> 
So I will see you next time. And maybe you can, don't eat him, leave him alone. <laughs> maybe you can send me some pictures of the nice snowmen and snow angels that you make for me. Okay? So in the meantime, are we ready? <gasps> Reach for the ceiling <laughs> and touch the floor. Stand up again. Let's do some more. Touch your head. <laughs> and now your knees. You need to get back. <laughs> up to your shoulders. Like this, you see. Reach for the ceiling. And touch the floor. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Bye-bye, <laughs> boys and girls. Bye.